Welcome to section 5.6, the invertibility theorem. Let's start with the takeaway from the previous section, which was that if A is an n by n invertible matrix, then the system, the linear system, Ax equals B, has the unique solution x equals A inverse times B. So just one solution. And in particular, if it's a homogeneous linear system, then of course that unique solution will be the trivial solution. So that's what we saw in the previous section. And the converse of that statement is if we start from from the result, which was that the linear system has only one solution, then we say that the matrix A must be invertible. This would be the converse statement. So we haven't proven this, but we will. And another way of stating this converse statement would be to say that if the matrix is singular, in other words, not invertible, then necessarily the linear system must have infinitely many or no solution at all. Okay, this is just a different way of wording this converse statement, that if A is singular, not invertible, then we cannot have the case where we have just one solution. It must be infinitely many or none at all. So we're not going to prove this formally right now, but we will try to convince ourselves of this using the following example. So this is example 5.6.1. It starts with consider the following linear system. Write the system as a matrix equation, Ax equals b, and show that A is singular. So first off, let's write this as a matrix equation. So we learned how to do this. The matrix of coefficients the matrix of constants, or rather, sorry, of variables, x, y, x, and then the matrix of constants, which in this case are b1 and b2. So we'll just add here that b1 and b2 are real numbers. So they're scalars. Um, so we're allowing for them to be any real numbers. And we're asked to show that a is singular. We know how to do that. So ad minus bc, remember that, equals 1 times 4 minus negative 2 times negative 2, also 4, 4 minus 4 equals 0, and that is enough for us to state that A is singular, singular or not invertible. And perfect, that's part A. And in part B, we're asked to find conditions on the constants, just, let's just, just say conditions on B1 and B2, for the system to have infinite many solutions and no solutions. So these are the only two cases we're asked for, and we'll see why in a second. It's because the other case, the case of just one solution, it's not going to be possible in this case, and we'll see why. Um, so we're asked to discuss the number of solutions, and if you remember from chapter three, every time we look at the number of solutions of a linear system, we work with what's called the augmented matrix of the system. So in this case, the augmented matrix, in other words, the coefficient matrix augmented with the column of constants. So this is the augmented matrix. And you might recall still from that chapter that whenever we look at the number of solutions, then we have to work with the concept of rank, which are, is the number of leading entries in the reduced matrix, which means I need to bring this matrix as close as possible to REF. So row 2 plus 2 row 1 becomes the new row 2. So 1 minus 2 B1, 0, 0, and B2 plus 2 B1. That's the column of constants in the reduced matrix. So you can see that's as far as we can go. And let's consider the first case, the case of infinitely many solutions. So you might recall still from that chapter that the rank for the system to be consistent, right? so infinitely many solutions means we need it to be consistent. Well, the rank of A, which in this case, notice is one, because the rank is simply the number of leading entries, in this case, number of leading ones in the coefficient matrix. So this rank is one, and we need that to equal to the rank of A augmented, right? So in this case, we need both of these to be one. And notice that that's also gonna make both those ranks less than two, which is equal to the number of variables, which means there will be infinitely many solutions, right? And so to sum this up, it's pretty clear that this needs to be a row of zeros, right? So in order for the system to have, I'll write it here, so for the system, the system Ax equals B to have infinitely many solutions, infinitely many solutions, solutions, we need necessarily that B2 plus 2B1, this needs to be equal to zero, right? Because if that's the case, then we'll have a row of zeros, the rank of A will equal the rank of A augmented, They'll both be equal to 1, which is less than 2, which is the number of variables, and we'll have infinitely many solutions. And then the second case, no solutions. Well, in that case, um, so we'll now do this one, no solutions. Well, for that to happen, I need the rank of A, which again is equal to 1. I need that to be less than the rank of the augmented matrix, right? 
the rank of the augmented matrix, the only way the rank of A can be less than that is if this is equal to the two, right? I need that to happen. Um, and so for that to happen, so you know, let's write it here, for the system system uh, to have to have no solution, in other words, uh, inconsistent, right? For it to be inconsistent, we need uh, B2, show it right here, we need uh, B2 plus 2B1, that last expression, 2B1, to be non-zero, right? That's the only way that the rank of A augmented, the augmented matrix, will be 2, if that is not zero. And so the two conditions, the condition for infinitely many solutions is B2 plus 2B1 equals zero, and the condition for no solution is B2 plus 2B1 not equal to zero. And what you'll notice is that that exhausts all the possibilities, right? There's no other possibility here, and that's not a coincidence. That's because the possibility of having just one solution is not available, and that's because the matrix is not invertible. And you notice that another way of looking at it is if you look at the matrix A, when we reduced it, we ended up with this matrix, and you know that, that, notice that that's not the identity matrix. So remember that condition? We said when A is equal to I, so when you can reduce A to I, then A is invertible, and the system will have just one solution. And so this is not the case here. This is a matrix that's not equal to I. It's a matrix that's not invertible, that is singular, and the linear system cannot have just one solution. So all of these statements are what we call equivalent statements, and we're going to prove that in a minute uh, in the inverted Lee theorem.